This lesson is on bank recons um, as well as creditors recons, also covering the debtor's age analysis. Okay, so this is a basic idea of what a bank recon looks like. You have your debit credit column, and then you should always start off with balance as per bank statement, any outstanding deposits, any outstanding checks, and there, there can be another line with any um, correction of errors. But I didn't include this because the debit or credit could be either depending on the error, but I will explain it. And then your balance as per bank account, and then your total column. Okay, first off, assets, well, bank is an asset, which increases on the debit side and decreases on the credit side. However, in the bank's books, they will have it in the opposite way round. So they see it as debit is negative and credit is positive. So that is the main um, minus plus that we use for bank recon, except this column. This is a separate plus minus. So first, our balance as per bank statement. If we have a positive balance, it will be on the credit side. This we get either from the information or from the bank statement that they've sent to us, depending on what they give you in the test or exam. Then, we, then what you're going to do is you're going to compare your books, so your CRJ and CPJ, to the business, to the bank's bank statement. So it's always best to go along the lines and tick what is there on both sides and then circle which things appear either only in the CRJ or CPJ or either only in the bank statement. In the recon, we put everything in that is things that are only appearing in the business's books. So if there is an outstanding deposit or an outstanding check, it means that the business has a deposit or check recorded that doesn't show up on the bank statement. If there is things in the bank statement that aren't in the business's books, we then would take those items and record them. So they usually have a little column for um, CRJ, CPJ adjustments, so where you can just add extra things on. So you'll have your what your balance or total was, and then you can add things onto that. Or they can ask you, they can give you the bank account amount, and then you have to add and subtract any money coming in minus any money, any money going out from what the bank statement shows that we our business doesn't have. So if the bank statement showed a deposit of 10,000 Rand for rent and we didn't appear in our books, then we would have to put it into our books um, and it would increase bank. So it would either go into the CRJ column or you would add it onto your bank balance, depending on what they're asking you. Okay, then that is basically with changing the business's books. Then we send the bank a bank recon where we show these are the things that are not appearing on our bank statement, but we have recorded so that they can adjust the bank statement. So we start off with the balance as per bank statement. This is the amount, the final balance that they give on the bank statement. It's on the credit side if it is a positive balance. If we have bank overdraft, you would put it on the debit side. Outstanding deposit, you can have many of these or just one or none. This is when we have a deposit recorded in our journals, but it's not, it's not showing on the bank statement. Some of the time, this could be because of the deposit being late, made late in the month and it not reflecting yet, or it could be an ethical problem where the person who was supposed to deposit the money actually didn't. Or a third, it's when the bank actually made a mistake and didn't put it in and didn't record it properly. So there's a few different options there. 
then any outstanding checks would go on the minus side, the debit side, because it is decreasing. So any outstanding checks, again, it would be checks appearing that in your journals, but not showing on the bank statement. This can be because either because checks haven't been cashed or because it hasn't reflected yet um, or because the bank made a mistake. If a check remains outstanding for six or more months, it becomes a stale check. In that case, it needs to be reversed. So the check needs to be kind of canceled. So an outstanding check that was outstanding in last year's, in last month's bank recon is now reached six months old. It's six months outstanding. We would go into our journals and we would reverse it. So we would add the amount which was initially subtracted, would add it back onto bank. Yeah. Then I mentioned there could be something after outstanding check called correction of error. This is if the bank and our books have a transaction, but maybe the bank debited it instead of crediting it or used the wrong number. This is a place where you would put your correction of error. It can go either on the debit side or the credit side, depending what the error is. So if the bank statement reflected a deposit of 5,000 Rand, but the deposit was actually 7,000 Rand, you would have correction of error and you would have 2,000 Rand in credit because it's actually meant to be 2,000 Rand higher. So you need to add on to the balance that they had. Then balances per bank account, you would use the amount after all your adjustments that you've done. So once you have added and subtracted all the missing figures that were missing from our books, you would then get a new bank balance and that would go either debit or credit side, it would be whatever it is in the books. So if our balance on our bank T account is on the debit side, which is a positive, it will go on the debit side. That's why I say it's different. Even though this is supposed to be minus, it's only minus for majority of the stuff. The balance is for bank account. That's from the actual um, T account, whether it was a debit or credit there. You would then total your total debits, get an answer, total all your total credits and get an answer, and these should be equal. Sometimes they don't give you enough information and then you have to work backwards to find something based on the fact that you know that these two must be equal. So say now they didn't give you balances per bank statement, you would total the side, get an amount, make it equal there, and then say this minus all my credits and the left over will be that amount. That is the, a basic bank recon. You can also have a single column where you just have plus and minuses, um, but this is the more common one. Then we move on to creditors recon. It is relatively similar to the bank recon. This is when you're comparing the creditors statement to your creditors ledger. When we, we will have first our balance as per creditor's statement. So this is the balance they give us. Once again, you're going to compare and tick and cross all of your transactions to the statement's transactions and circle ones that aren't in common. You're then going to change your books with whatever the statement has that your books don't. So whatever you're missing, you have to change in your books. And then you come and do the recon, which is what you're going to send to the creditors and what you've identified of their mistakes. Firstly, um, the, since creditors are a minus plus because they're a liability, so minus on the debit side, plus on the credit side, we swap it around for the, the recon because in the creditors' books, this is what we would have. We would have a plus and then a minus. Okay, so our balance as per creditor statement, like I said, is what is the balance they give on us on the statement. Then you'll have the adjustments that are in our books but don't show on the statement. So these can be any outstanding invoices, outstanding receipts, anything like that. 
depend there can be a whole bunch of different things correction of errors very similar to the bank recon only this time anything that is increasing your debt would go on the positive so anything that's going to increase my creditors con your creditors amount will go on this side and anything that's going to decrease will go on the credit side so an invoice would go on the debit side and a receipt would go on the credit side you then have your balance as per creditors ledger this is after all the adjustments and it's very similar to this balances for bank account you take whatever it would represent in a creditor's t account in the books so credit it would if it was a credit balance it's a credit balance here even though credit balance in our books shows positive and here we majoritarily want negative this is the only thing that doesn't apply to this plus minus you just take it from the side it was we then total each side and these should be equal once again you can they can not give you something and then ask you to monkey puzzle to find the things um and they can also give you a single column where you don't have a debit credit but rather just add and plus the amounts but again this is the more common way then data's age analysis this is when you have all your data and you're working out how old their debt is this is generally for internal control measures um, and to make sure that our data are actually paying us so we have in our data one data two so let's start with data one his total debt is 10,000 rand then they they would say data one has 10,000 rand worth of debt it is broken down into 50 percent current 30 percent in 30 days and 30 days old and 20,000 is, is 20, sorry, 20% 20 is 60 days old. Then you would have to work out what is 50% of 10,000, what is 30% of 10,000, what is 20% of 10,000, and then you put them into their relevant blocks. Okay. Um, so if we have 5,000 in current, that means it's less than 30 days old, that's fine. 3,000 Rand is 30 days old. That's kind of still okay because generally you want your debtors to pay you back in 30 days. You would sometimes be given that data one has, that all debtors must pay within 30 days. So that would kind of still be okay. But the fact that there's 2,000 Rand outstanding for 60 days, that's a big problem. So you would have to, with like internal control, you would have to say he shouldn't have been allowed to get more debt with having owed 2,000 rand that is 60 days old type of thing. Um, and then obviously 60 plus days is really bad. Then we move on to data two. If you have a total of 20,000 rand outstanding and all of it is current, that's perfectly fine. Um, and, and we are hoping that they'll pay us within 30 days. That's just an example, different two examples. Then another question that they could ask, they could have said that data two's limit was 15,000 Rand. But now you can see he's ex exceeded the 15,000 Rand. So now it is 20,000, 5,000 Rand over. So you need to think of creative ways to stop this from happening. A certain, uh, one example would be that you could have a system on the computers that as soon as you scan a data for a certain amount, it has a limit. So it picks up the limit and won't allow that amount to exceed um, whatever. But that is all for your recon section. Yeah.